previously on Deadly Premonition. The gallery is called Muses Gallery. The Muses were the nine daughters of the goddess of memory in Greek mythology. Ah, uh, it's just like Diane to name it that way. Is she that intelligent a woman? Oh, uh, maybe. You'll see for yourself soon enough. Did you see how Emily reacted, Zach? I sense that this Diane is not popular among other women. I can't wait to meet her. Let's see what uh, Diane presents. It looks Those more like an old creatures. mansion than an art gallery. Diane liked the building so much she turned it into an art gallery. Oh. She left the exterior untouched and had the insides redone. Here. She's from the diner, right? Hello, Olivia. Do you like art? Yes. Yes, I do. Oh, maybe not. Well, I, I mean... I, I like trees. Trees. Okay. Ah, but I see because these are all tree paintings. Do you come here often, then? Oh, uh, well, um, no. Just sometimes. I'm sorry, I really need to get back to the diner. Oh, she is in the diner, okay. That's suspicious. Zach, she was lying about something. She said trees, not paintings of trees. She doesn't need to come here to see trees. There's tons of trees outside. Like I said, there's no point in you having this. I can put it to far better use. I'm taking it with me, okay? That's fine by me then, as you wish. Whoa. Oh, that's Thomas's sister, isn't it? The FBI agent, right? Just wait a moment, please. I'll be right with you. She thinks of me as an enemy, always bickering at what I say. Is there any reason for that? Perhaps because someone she liked ended up with me in my bed? Well, that would explain it, yes. Uh, if I may be so bold, who was the lucky man? Oh, I sleep with anyone I wish. Anyone I prefer to sleep with. Go on. I guess she had her eye on one of them, but I don't know who it was exactly. I could sleep with you, if you like. I'm flattered by your offer, but I don't think that would be appropriate. You're exactly the kind of woman a man in my job should never get involved with. Isn't that a shame, darling? Hey everyone, Necroveri is back with another episode of Deadly Premonition Director's Cut. If you remember, in the last episode we toured, I believe, the art gallery. Yes, it's been a while since I played this. Uh, with Diane, and we just talked with Emily. Emily, do you know a man named Forrest Kaysen? Kaysen? Yes, I, I know him. The, the sapling salesman, right? He always uses strange comparisons when he talks. I'd like to know more about him. What does he do when he comes to town? He's a salesman, so I guess he sells things. Maybe he comes on vacation. I, we haven't seen many tourists recently, but he comes pretty often. Is that all? Well, now that you mention it, he seems quite friendly with the Ingrams, with Isaac and Isaiah. Maybe you should ask them about Kaysen. Okay, I will. Where's George? Anyways, we're gonna, before I was really interrupted with Emily, luckily she's here because she reminded me what we were doing to start with. I just backed into something. Um, nope, backed into something. Damn this car. We're gonna head to the uh, Angie Diner and talk with Nick and Olivia, I believe it is. Yeah. So let's get on the road. Forgot how bad this car handles. Emily, don't you find it a bit suffocating to be around George so much? Well, we aren't always together. And anyway, I've gotten used to him. Impressive. Women are very adaptable. No, it's not like that, actually. I mean, George is hard headed, sure, but he's also a hard working man. That's why the townsfolk trust him so much. The very epitome of the rural sheriff. That's right. He isn't some hotshot FBI agent. This place isn't like the city. Everyone knows everyone else. What about you and Anna? Were you too close? No, not close, really. I don't seem to have much in common with teenagers nowadays. All they talk about are boys, clothes, and accessories. I don't have much interest in any of those things. There is a gap between a teenager and being in your 20s. Everyone's different, that's all. Me and you, too. Zach, I'm not liking the way this conversation is heading. Let's concentrate on driving instead. 
Oh, let's just get to the good part, though. Angie Diner. And here we are, the diner. Looks like nobody's here. And I'm taking myself. Oh, wait. Um, Kason is here. What the hell? Oh. There we go. Big Red Nursery, it's called. I was here before. The A&G Diner. Wonder what the A and G stand for. Any ideas, Emily? Nope, I don't know either. Air and gravity, perhaps? Access and games? Aliens and Godzilla? Who knows? Is it important to know? I mean, why don't you just ask Nick? Oh, I will. But first, I need to eat. Wonder what's good here. You've eaten here before, York. We just leave her outside? What a jerk. Welcome, Mr. Agent. Hi, Olivia. Let me have your special for today. And some fresh coffee. Our special today is turkey. A turkey and gravy sandwich. Sound good? Oh, perfect. Emily, you eat something, too. It'll be on the FBI. Okay, then. I'll go all out. I'll have the T-bone steak. I usually can't order it because it's a little too expensive. I'll take full advantage of that, huh? Oh, it's him again. Mrs. Olivia Cormack, I am here for Mr. Stewart's lunch. <laughs> if it is ready, I'd thank you a bunch. Yes, of course. Just a moment. Here you go. The usual. One turkey, strawberry jam, and cereal sandwich. Um. Sounds like the sinner's sandwich. Self-inflicted punishment to atone for past sins. He's setting an example. Mr. Francis York Morgan, you should try this wonderful lunch. It's more than a delicious, tasty crunch. So says Mr. Stewart. No, that's fine. I've just ordered my own lunch. How does he eat? Does it just go through, like, the air hole, or...? Mr. Francis York Morgan, I, that is, Mr. Stewart's order is delicious, I should mention. And Mr. Nick Cormack is a genius for creating this perfection. So says Mr. Stewart. Still, I have a hunch I might not like it. You sure that sandwich is that good? Mr. Francis York Morgan, making decisions based on intuitions is always a sign of bad FBI agents. So says Mr. Stewart. Harry, you're right. I'll give it a try. Oh, put it in his place. That looks disgusting. I can't believe it. This is fantastic. It's really good. Olivia, I'm sorry, but can I change my order? I'll have what Harry is having. <laughs> These facial expressions are terrible. Nick and Diane. They hardly make the perfect couple, do they? Is it widely known that they go drinking together, just the two of them? To be honest, I don't pay attention to these things. Not into local gossip? Well, when I moved here, I was still in high school, and I kept wearing the same wild clothes from my school in Seattle. I was young back then. And before I knew it, there were rumors all over the school. She'll screw anyone. That's what they said. Totally unfounded, of course. Anyway, after that, I just sort of chose not to really trust gossip. I still can't take her serious with those clothes. I get where you're coming from. I used to dress like a hardcore punk rocker when I was in high school. What? <laughs> you? A punk rocker? <laughs> Nobody took my side. Even when I had good grades, people rejected me just because of what I wore. 
<laughs> I was young back then, too. <laughs> Even still, I just don't see you as a punk rocker. <laughs> and you laugh? Look at you. No makeup on. Dressed in uniform, eating That's... a steak for lunch. It's a uniform? Okay, back to work. Let's talk to Nick. You for... Oh, man, that... these costumes are just ridiculous. Well, you know, Kaysen is here. We talked to him. You! Hey, York, the food here is the best, isn't it? Would you agree? I'm going to go up another notch on my belt before too long. You don't need a belt, you're wearing overalls. No matter how much I wash my diet, I was pilot back on in this town. Is he waving a fart? What is he doing? I'm like a bear before hibernation. Info gather! Okay. So, we don't need Olivia, we need to talk to Nick Corman. Is that guy drinking a beer? Ah, it's just day drinking, Charlie Brown, it's fine. What's up? Could you tell us what you were doing the night Anna was killed? I was at the bar with Diane. What did you two talk about, Nick? Rembrandt and Turner, is that a problem? No, no problem. You think Diane did it? You're wrong. Why would I think that? No, that's not it. Oh, so it's me you're after, isn't it? You're wrong again. So much for the FBI, huh? That isn't the case either, Nick. I think there's something both of you are hiding. You can tell when people are hiding something by their reactions. Eye, tongue, hand movements, sweat, dry lips, neck angles, and such. I'm working here. If you aren't ordering anything, get out. Can I go on his... Nope. Hey! I'm working here. You can't just stroll into a chef's kitchen. Then perhaps you would give me your permission to enter. Probably not. No! Get the hell out of here! Zack, everyone has their own sanctuary. Yeah, Let's no. leave him in his. Uh, I thought we could sneak in. What about, um... I guess we're, since we're here, let's talk to Olivia. There's something I'd like to confirm with you, Olivia, if that's okay. Yes. Well, so long as it doesn't take too long. First, what were you and Nick doing on the night of the murder? I was here in the diner. Nick said he was going to the bar for a couple of drinks. Story checks out so far. Does he go to the bar often? Leaving you to hold up the fort? Y yes He says he enjoys the conversation with Diane. I thought they went drinking again together that night. Do the three of you ever go drinking together? Well... You see, I'm really not into art. And your husband is well-versed in the arts, then, I take it? Oh, yes. Um, looking at art and talking about it is his way of relaxing. Mm. <laughs> People just aren't what they seem. Like a certain someone who was into punk rock ten years ago. Mm -hmm. You are absolutely right, Emily. But you can be an art lover and a liar at the same time. One more thing, Olivia. You just said that you aren't interested in art. That's right. And... What was she doing at the art gallery? So, how come I bumped into you at the art gallery? Didn't seem like Nick brought you there. You were there alone. I... Well... I like trees, is the thing. That's why I went there. That doesn't make Surely sense. you'd be better off in the forest rather than an art gallery, then. Uh, I think you went to the gallery not to see trees, but to see Diane, right? Uh, uh, oh, snap, son. You don't want to answer? Or perhaps this isn't the right place to ask. M meet me in the backyard. You can get there from the parking lot. I'll wait for you there for an hour after we close up. And a protective lead, yeah. I got key to the backyard. They close at 2100. Should we get something to drink and wait? Is 
Let's just hang out with Emily. Agent York, what do we do now? I want to hear what Olivia has to say. Let's kill time until the diner closes. Okay, then I'm gonna make a trip back to the department. I'll see you in the backyard later. Okay, sounds good. I mean, like, you know, see you I'll later then. Away. Zach, about Olivia. I presume she wants to tell us something about Nick and Diane. Let's hope it's not just something for the gossip columns. You know, for a second there, I thought that um, Diane was Nick's husband. Or, Diane was Nick's wife. <laughs> oh man, we have a long time to kill. Um, What are we gonna do? Um, Who's closer? Oh, that's right off there. Let's go see the general and yeah, let's go see the general. So we're gonna take a left at the gas station. We're gonna go see the general then, since we have some time to kill. Because we have until 2100, which is 10 hours. And we just ate, so we should be just fine. So we'll head back up towards the gas station. We'll take a left. We'll go to the visit the general. If you remember him from the last episode. Or from two episodes ago? I can't remember. I can't keep it straight. Oh, the lag. Um, he mentioned if we want to know more to come see where the junkyard. That's exactly what we're going to do. Oh, God. He went on a drive. I swear. This town is messed up, man. I don't even know if this is the right way or not anymore. Zach, don't you think there are a lot of good-looking women in this town? Um... It's like heaven compared to the town we grew up in. Oh, okay. Do you remember Liz? The prom queen? No. Elizabeth Scott Moore. She could be royalty with a name like that. Mm. But, you know, she was like an actress from a B-movie, wasn't she? Bleached blonde hair, too much makeup, clothes showed off her cleavage. And that mole by her mouth. Oh, Monroe? Say, Zach, were you with me back then? Um, you know, no. That mole was made with makeup, right? Oh, shit. We happened to be on the same bus once. I saw her drawing it on with makeup. I wasn't surprised, I guess. Just impressed that she would go that far to create that image. Do you remember that movie we went to go see that day? I'll give you a hint. It was the fourth in a popular series. Twilight. And was produced by Menahem Golan's Canon Films. No idea. Figured it out, Zach? Think it over then. Call it your homework until next time. Oh, jeez. I don't know this kind of stuff. Where it looks like we are here at the junkyard. We're cops. We can go through the grass. Hmm. You know, let's just park up right here. Get out. Let's go talk to the general. Hopefully he's still here. And there's a card here as well. He was here just a couple minutes ago when we were here, but... Let's see if we can find him. Open. Yeah, there we go. General. Hello, sir. <laughs> Ah, there you are. You came in a good time, son. I've come to hear more about the raincoat killer. Don't rush. Rushing on the battlefield will get you killed. You don't want to die, son. You should be methodical. Well, even though that's a huge amount of scrap metal. Son, you must be the only guy to see scrap when you look at these treasures. Look more carefully. Right here, just in front of you, that is what you were looking for. Hmm? There's still plenty of parts that can be used. So if you're ready to get your hands dirty, you should find useful parts for your car. What do you think? Um, I'm gonna talk. I don't really care about the cars. Now then, young fella. How do you feel about your current vehicle? My vehicle? It's a piece of crap, but I'm not here to talk about that. Then how about a little treasure hunt? Oh, come on, man, really? Listen up, young man. My junkyard is actually a mountain of treasure. Mm -hmm. All kinds of treasure lies in those mountains of junk. The problem is, there's so many, I've lost track of where everything is. <laughs> mm. 
You've caught on already. I can see it in your eyes. I need you to head out in the yard and find certain things for me. If you help me out, I'll customize your car a little. What are you talking about? Didn't I tell you to shut up and listen to your superiors? <laughs> now will you do it or not? I don't see any reason to refuse. Well said. First, I'll need some low gear parts. With that, I'll be able to boost the engine of your car. You'll find one around E5. Go! Don't just stand there, get going! Alright. Low gear parts, number 40. I need low gear parts. First, we're gonna get this agent honor. Oh god, we have to walk all the way around this stuff. That good enough. E5. Luckily, he has these things uh, categorized, which is good. Um, so E's gonna be over there. Five is gonna be dead in the middle. Hey, another agent honor. Cool. There's a card over there. I don't really need to collect that just yet. So E5. What the hell's that thing? That's a noodle of some sort. Oh, it's like an airport um, flag. Um. Hmm. Uh, nope. The heck are we supposed to get through this stuff? Honestly, really? Can I climb on top of these things? No, I cannot. Climb on top of this. No, I cannot. How the dickens do you expect me to get over these things, then? Hmm. Go back this way? Oh, I see. You have steel pop up, thank you. Oh, thanks. Okay, so, should be over here somewhere. There's five. Probably back there, yeah. Gonna walk all the way around here. Oh, what a pain in the butt. <laughs> what was that noise? The dog? Hopefully I don't have to kick the crap out of his dog. That would suck. There we go. Batter up? No, I'm just kidding. That's terrible. Uh, so here's E. Here's E5 right here. Little gear part. Nice. So we got that. Now we can waltz my butt all the way back there. I could have just followed the map. The map would have told me how to get in there. That would have been easy enough to do, I guess. Alright, so we got the card that I didn't really care about. And we got... Um, how the hell do we get back in here? We got the parts. Let's bring them back to the general. Let's see what's next. Uh, Observe him. I wouldn't want to join his squad. That's a sergeant's uniform. Oh, okay, what do you want again? Uh, talk. So, have you found what we need? Little gear parts. This is it. This will save your life someday, son. Okay. You sure know how to exaggerate. Where did you, you put that? imbecile. Engine boost is vital for bringing back soldiers alive from war. Engine boost? Of course. Engine boost is the basis of everything. Let me tell you a war story, son. I was leading my unit at the very front line. Things were bad, and sanitary conditions were worse. Endless guerrilla attacks were stripping us of our manpower. Everyone was tired to their limits. There was one sergeant who really rubbed me the wrong way. The boys like to call him Crybaby Timothy. He really gave me headaches, I can tell you. How? Just by breathing. His posture was bad. He was weak, slow, easily distracted. I have no idea who thought he was capable of combat in a war zone. He endangered the lives of every member of the unit. Stomach pains. The worst stomach ache ever. Every one of us. It was just cooking. He was using food that was contaminated. 
contaminated. I flew into the dugout toilet like an Apache chopper returning to base. I have to tell you, it was a close call. My engine was boosting. And that's what got me there safely, right in the nick of time. What happened to the unit? You really want to know? Wow, his voice changes drastically. It was a terrible sight. Everyone was pooping. Powerful, athletic men reduced to walking dead. Blinking like crazy, shaking with pain. Their confidence and self-esteem were all crushed. They almost didn't recover. An interesting story. <laughs> so you see the need for engine boost now, do you? I'll keep my side of the promise and get to work on your vehicle. That badge on him is for a sergeant. Looks like it was sewn on something else before it was sewn onto his shirt. I wonder what that's all about. Hmm. I put in longer pistons and optimized your lower gears. That, that should add quick. boost to your speed when you accelerate. But there's still plenty of stuff I can do to make your car go faster. Just come see me again and I'll customize your car a little more. I don't think I need the car any faster. I mean, the game can barely keep up with it to start with. But thanks, I guess. Does he know anything else about the murder? What do you want again? Can we talk? Rank makes the man. That's true, but then the man also makes the rank. Status isn't as important as self-confidence. Well, that was kind of a useless lead, I guess. Um, we were going to find more about the raincoat killer, but that did not happen. Anyways, we're going to end this episode here. And in the next episode, I think we might head to Cope's Tunnel. But, uh, yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you're enjoying the series. Tell me what you think in the comments below. We will see you in the next episode. Bye bye